Hello, welcome to Star Wars Spell Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman. And today, ooh, we're getting close to Acolyte season. We're not quite there yet. All the Acolyte stuff is coming. But before we get there, we thought we'd t- catch up with a good friend of the show, a, a, a very uh, constant contributor who hasn't been on for a while. But let's get him on here. Matthew Turbo Thurban. Hey, mate, how you doing? Hey, how you going, Josh? Thanks for inviting me. Um, I think this is going to be so wizard. <laughs> you just dropped the vernacular. I saw. Let's get straight on to Wizard. I was watching um, Star Wars explains like forty questions about um, you know the Phantom Menace. He sort of does these yep. videos, about, and I, I was watching it today uh, after I knocked off work. And there was the thing about Wizard where it basically they'd retconned it from into a High Republic book that there was a a Jedi learner or a Jedi Padman who decided he wanted to like make it a, a saying. Like he was basically trying to make wizard happen. That was he just got. Oh well, this is the new cool term that I've decided that people are going to say. I didn't know that one. Yeah. Yeah, and then apparently people just thought he was dumb and it was a stupid thing. But he, uh, there were some younger Jedi who looked up to him and they just started using it, and that's how it like became in the yeah. vernacular. I mean, I guess I guess Jedi's kind of do look like wizards, so maybe it was a an old Jedi thing. Who knows? Yeah. I, yeah. I have you ever tried to make it? Try to make a catchphrase happen. Turbo. You're a pretty cool dude. I, I, no, I got, I got I, nothing. I think I would be I a little bit that. embarrassed for you if I found out that, that you were actually. Like, Did you know Turbo tried to make some stupid thing? Happen? Make some, some stupid thing. Happen. No, some term no. happen. Yeah, bad enough trying to get wizard. I don't, I don't. I don't think you can still get wizard today unless you use it in that very specific context. Yeah, it's tongue in cheek now. It's um. Yeah, it's got a, <laughs> it's got a lot of history. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which we'll talk about tonight, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So we are going to touch on, or try to. You know, we'll, we won't dedicate solely, but it is the Phantom Menace's twenty fifth anniversary. Um, it's a little bit hard to not know that, but as far as the actual date, um, but we'll, we'll touch on that in a second. But we'll, we'll circle around in a little bit. Uh, I'm just trying to remember the last time you were actually on the show. I think it was. I think you touched on it just before we started recording. You were on for one of the Ahsoka. Reviews. Yeah, I think one of the middle Ahsoka episodes, maybe. Uh, yeah. Which was, when was that? I, it might have even been the Thrawn episode where Thrawn made his appearance. I think I was on with Matt. Uh, been, yeah. yeah, around better, that time anyway. Better yeah. right, rein Matt in. Yeah, I well, think you're definitely on the, because as I've sort of been, been saying, I've been mean, uploading all the, the all the back catalogue of the older older episodes because they sort of disappeared when I migrated. And your name does pop up quite a lot on there. So you've you got a pretty good yeah. back catalogue. You know? And I think the time before that would have been the Beatles episode talking about uh, Get Back with um, Very, Matt Frost. Really, yeah. a lot of people downloaded that episode, like <laughs> yeah. a lot more than even like some of the regular ones. So I, I, I don't know whether people just were Googling on Beatles stuff and then just found that sort of just yeah. randomly. And like, oh, listen, and then it was like, oh, now it's all just Star Wars talk. I can't. The Beatles were trending at that time, I guess. Yeah, they were, they were hot at the moment. Have you watched the, um, the Let It Be, like the original yet? On Disney? No, I, I kind of don't see the point. I, I feel like the the new Get Back has sort of presented us with the the warts and all and the the true story. Whereas I think from memory, the Let It Be, at least the VHS rip that I saw, was kind of a bit depressing in a way. Um, so I, I don't know. I'll probably watch it, but it's not something I want to. It's not sort of like high to, on yeah. the list. Yeah, I haven't I haven't done it yet either. I'm sort of. <laughs> it's popped up on Disney Plus a couple of times. I've just gone. Well. <laughs> I'm kind of curious to know if anything in the original film was not in Get Back or vice versa, like yeah, like cutscenes kind or of, or even just sort of presented in a way where it's like it seems really depressing in the original, and if you wait like two more seconds of footage, they'll have a little chuckle, you know what I mean, or a laugh, or the yeah. the mood around the shot is different, and I don't know. I just, I, well, I, 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 just, I recall that they in the original film they just left out a lot of friendly banter, and you know it. it kind of implied they weren't friendly at the time. They're all just sort of but, um, solemnly standing around. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's all the power in the editing room, you see. You can just yeah. uh, <laughs> What's all that thing of, you know, people when they go on reality television, they're all just like, oh, you know, they got massacred in the editing room. They just Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean it's like Peter Jackson, I, I prefer the extended cuts of uh, Lord of the Rings, so I I might as well stick with Get Back. The more the merrier. <laughs> just give me the yeah. give me the give me the long takes. Um yep. Yeah, so you were obviously on some of the celebration pods in London as well, and yeah. I mean you've been on all of them, all you know Anaheim and uh, and Chicago as well. It's funny because my um, my sister 
was just in Chicago last week. So uh, yeah, right. I sort of had Chicago front and center and she was sort of asking me, she's going, oh, you know, what should I do in Chicago? What's good to do in Chicago? I'm like, well, I only really went to the convention center. <laughs> we yeah. we kind of had a, an echo what? base, went, to, went and visited Struthers where he was staying. <laughs> yeah, I was saying I was fly in, fly out. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't see much of Chicago. Yeah, I, I'd like to like to go back. Um, from what I saw of the city at, at nighttime in a pub, I thought it was quite good. <laughs> yeah, we saw a little bit during the day on the day after before we left, but it wasn't there wasn't much at all. But uh, I did actually throw out a, a message to some of our Chicago friends and Claire Stribling and Laura from Force Toast, Rick Villanueva, and they were all great. They threw out a bunch of suggestions that I passed on to Elise and um, special shout out to Laura actually who messaged me saying you know here's my number if your sister gets lost or you know she can catch up and do these things and she was awesome so shout out Laura if you're listening Um, appreciate that and that's just the advantage of making Star Wars friends all over the world so you never know when you need to we do seem to have collected quite a few (laughs) quite a few friends across the world yeah that's right Nobody's come to Melbourne since. <laughs> or Sydney. Everyone's welcome to Sydney. I've got a pool. I'll, you yeah. know, you can have a swim. All good. Same here. I'm just waiting. Uh, you know, the Celebration Melbourne or Celebration Sydney, whenever all of a sudden the calls start coming then. Yeah, I've got this thing where I've, I've got a... Uh, one of my bucket list items is to see the World Cup. And so it's, uh, it's in Canada, US and Mexico in 2027 or yep. six. And I'm like, oh, maybe I could call up my Star Wars friends and uh, sleep on their couch. You got to get the itinerary. You got to find. Well, first you got to find out where the Socceroos are playing, and then if you yeah, can work yeah. around that, and then go, all right, let's see who lives. He lives nearby. Oh, okay, you know, Raj is in that general area, yep. and all, Emily's in New York, and and this person's here and here, and <laughs> <laughs> you could just do a little. Uh, yeah. And then maybe you just anyone in Mexico though, but you know. Well, what you got to do is you got to find out now, and then get to Celebration Japan. And work out the gaps. So do some yep. research on some other Star Wars people. You don't, you know, going. Oh man, I don't know anybody in. I don't know. I don't know anybody in <laughs> Vancouver. <laughs> yeah, in Vancouver. All right, who's who's got a Star Wars celebration at Vancouver? I can buy him a beer, and then I got a place to stay <laughs> when I come for the World Cup. Yeah, um, that's my master plan. Yeah, that's my master plan. look out, Canadians at Star Wars Celebration Japan. If you find some bloke being extra friendly to you. It's just because he's looking for a bed. <laughs> um, so you got your Celebration Japan tickets. You, I do, yes. You were on the on the Discord with all of us. Um, I didn't have to buy you one. You kind of you got through on your own, luckily. Yeah, well, no, I was doing really badly with the Walking Man thing. So I looked at everyone else's times, and everyone was shouting out, you know, twenty minutes, and mine was about an hour wait, and. Um, but what I did was I've got a couple of friends that are going. Um, I've got a friend, Clinton, who I actually have known since sort of preschool time, and we actually went to the Phantom Menace midnight screening together, so sort of a school friend. Mm-hmm. And I've convinced him to come to Celebration in Japan. So I, I kind of gave him uh, the ins and outs of, you know, the, the queuing system and the, what we have to do and we have to be on the, on the mark and everything. And he uh, actually, his queue was quite fast, so he just bought me a ticket. Oh, that's and, good. Uh, yeah, I was a bit well, worried because I, I already had like, we were all going, you know, the names are coming in and this person's at 20 minutes and this person, and I looked like I was coming in first and I'm going, oh, and Andy and Catherine were all behind and then Matt Moll was behind and then I knew you were behind too. I'm going, this maths doesn't work out. <laughs> I'm one short. Yeah, there's too many people. I'm going to have to say, like, I was going, oh. And then luckily in the Discord, you're going, oh, I've got a mate who's, who looks like he's yeah. helping me out here. going, oh, good. I don't have to awkwardly tell one person that i can't get them a ticket yeah. i mean luckily the the th- you know everybody got what they needed so it didn't quite yeah there, that. There, i don't think there was any disappointments there was no i don't think anyone had to buy a single day passes either so no that turned out pretty good so i think a couple i think a couple in the wider crew of people we know i think someone like charlie ashby i think had two in the end but again i, I think this year the cost was the same or very minimal so it wasn't like previous yeah. years where it was a killer so now i've just got to work on the beanies um i'm trying to figure out if i can get them shipped directly to japan that's my plan because it'll be a lot cheaper to send well, where were they man- where are they manufactured they're manufactured in china right so i'm th- in theory because ha- honestly like half the cost of getting them done is getting them shipped <laughs> to australia and then i put them in a bag and i take them somewhere else so i'm kind of hoping that maybe 
I don't know whether I can get them shipped directly to a hotel, but the problem is it's like I want to have some leeway if something goes wrong. So mm. Unless I can have somebody who's there who lives in Japan that can put it in their spare room or something. I don't know. It mm. might just be easier just to send them to Australia. But I like the idea that if I can do you know, more of them or they don't cost as much. And Anyway, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Got any ideas of colors? I've got a pretty yeah. good solid design in my head. I think I want mm. to do um i won't give that away but i want to try i think i'm either going to update the logo on the front to use some japanese text mm. or on the back where we normally put sort of swc chicago or whatever i think i might just get tokyo in japanese script on the back like that but yeah. it's going to depend on how it turns out because it doesn't work in like you know in the knitted in the knitted form does it, <laughs> yeah. does it translate into the knit? and this, this is the danger as well of just sort of going all right well if i go they're going to be like this and you ship to a j- box in japan they just sit there for a month until i get there and then i just open them up yeah. and I get the celebration <laughs> they all look like shit and i'm like well i guess it, that's what it is it is what it is yeah that's the novelty of it i'll i'll, I'll... I'll have one. Yeah, I'll, I'll put you. I'll, you put you down for one. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, and the thing is, if they're a bit cheaper, I can make a few more, and there's more chances that people can yeah. can get some as well. So, well, especially if I get them shipped directly there, I don't have to try to fit them all in a bag. So it's like, yeah, it's like Pokemon. I've got to collect them all. I've got. I've got oh, I can all just see behind you. I know you can't. See the, the, yeah. the audio medium, but he's got there's a couple right there. That's uh, yeah. lovingly on the couch in in Turbo Study. <laughs> um. So, looking forward to Acolyte. Are you, are, you, are you getting the, the juices pumping? I tend to not get too excited by any Star Wars. <laughs> by Star, anything. I, like, <laughs> I I'm, I'm not... very level-headed, <laughs> no expectations. I'll enjoy it when it's there. <laughs> I want to be surprised. Um, and that's the way I've approached a lot of Star Wars. I don't I don't really get any hype. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I enjoy any new Star Wars, and I'm, I like the fact that it's outside of the – the period that we've seen so it's something mm. new um a bit of mystery to it apparently you know um it's a few theories around that but um i yeah i i'm really am looking forward to it, especially uh, after watching the phantom menace again i kind of like that period that's kind of like the the classical period of the jedi even, even though the jedi were um on their way down essentially <laughs> uh, it was the it was the it was the end of it all um yeah yeah I'm just... I haven't really um, read the High Republic. I read the first book, um, scattered through a bit of comics. Um, but my older son has actually gone through, I think at least all of Phase One, so he's really excited for oh, it right. as well. He's so um, he's like a I'll live King Tom. Vic- he knows yeah, I'll, I'll live vicariously through, through him. Um, I think he's on the Phase Two at the moment. So um, yeah, I've just yeah, been. That... Um, I've read some of the comics. I haven't really read the books, but I'm actually doing a playthrough another playthrough of Jedi Survivor at the moment, and that's got quite a lot of High Republic sort of ties to it as well, which is quite mm. quite cool. So that's sort of that's getting me in the in the zone for it. But yeah, well, I'm I'm looking forward to it. New Star Wars. I feel like it's gonna be it's gonna be one of those shows, I think, given the the writer and, 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 and everything, where it's it's not gonna reveal itself until the very end. So if there's I don't know if there's eight episodes or six episodes, whatever it yeah. is, let's say it's eight. I think until you get to eight or the end of eight or just before, it's not going to become clear exactly whatever the mysteries are, whatever the reveals are. And I think that's going to, to some people, frustrate them or make bad assumptions before we get to it. You know what I mean? Like they'll get, you'll get to episode two and be like, oh, nothing's happening or this is dumb or this makes no yeah. sense. Or this, it's like, dude... <laughs> They're not moving the plot forward. Wait till the end. <laughs> why, why are we spending so much time with this? This bit's boring. It's like this is going to be a very intricate, in, intricately <laughs> linked, you know, woven story where it's all not going to all make sense yeah. until you get to the end. So hold your powder. Like I've got to, yeah. So I pay attention. You stay off your phone. Yeah, I, I kind of wonder um, what the editing style is going to be in the overall style because it, is it going to be like. Um, sequential in time or is it going to be some flashbacks mm. because there's a lot of um in the trailer i've noticed there's a lot of different haircuts how would i say hairstyles between different characters so yep. it's like it's almost like they might be switching back in time um and i think you i don't know if you've seen russian doll as well yep. yeah i have um i kind of like the 
the style of that editing as well. So I don't know. I'm just I'm down for anything new um, <laughs> as well. Yeah, like a whole new Star Wars show. Like it's yeah, it's exciting. Bring it on. And it, it, it was confirmed today that I saw uh, that it will be the 6 p.m. America time drop. So it will be the 11 a.m. or whatever it is that we'll get here in Australia on the. Oh, that's Eastern very tempting. Time. So yeah, so there is the temptation to watch it in your lunch break. Um, which, yeah, I, I, that was Ahsoka. Ahsoka was that time, wasn't it? Ahsoka was that. Yeah, Andor was yeah. the evening. Um, and I don't even know if the last Mandalorian went early. I don't think it did. I think it went. It was late as well. Yeah, so that time doesn't really matter to me. Like I'll. <laughs> I've been tempted to do a sneaky watch during work hours, but um, because my older son, Luke, is really into it, he he makes me just wait for it. He goes, don't watch it without me. So I go, okay, I'll go through the work day. And then his high school is getting pretty serious with work, so he's got a bit of homework, and he's very strict with homework. So oh, wow. it's not me. He wants to do his homework <laughs> first, and then we can watch Star Wars. So <laughs> sometimes like, ah, we bunk it off, mate. Year 11, nothing what happens in year 11 anyway. It's the easiest year. <laughs> That's what I said. But um, no, I'm, I, uh, he's, he's motivated, so I've got to go with that. So sometimes I didn't watch Ahsoka till like 9 o'clock. Yeah, um, yeah, which I think is why you weren't on a lot of our review shows. Cause, that's that's Because that's <laughs> we would yeah. go, well, we're going to record about 8.30 here so we can get it out, and <laughs> you know, we're not going until late, and you're going, yeah, I'm not. I haven't even said that. And then, the then there's after school stuff, there's soccer training, there's like band practice and all these things. Just life, life admin. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, usually I'd watch it about 8 30, 9 o'clock. You've got so. to work Star Wars around these things. Yeah, yeah. well, I'm actually hoping, but I might, I don't know, because I, I think Kat's keen to watch it because she, you know, she likes some of the Star Wars stuff. She likes Mandalorian. She loved Andor. She didn't do Ahsoka really just because I would cause basically because I watched it earlier and then was like oh I've already seen it um, and she didn't seem like she was desperately going to see it but she loved Russian Doll so that's mm. the sell well, she's like oh the lady from Russian Dolls made it like, I love Russian Dolls so um, sold sold so we, 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 though it does mean it's kind of like alright well if you're going to do this we've got to be you know, sat down and we watch it and then we've got to you know, roll on so I can get this these recordings and stuff out so it's not I'm not editing at midnight kind of thing. But, um, yeah, bring it on, I say. Bring it on. Bring it on. So we've touched on it. Let's let's pivot back. 25 years of The Phantom Menace. Um, it won't be 25 years on the Australian release yet. Was it start of June? June, June 3rd. June 3rd. <laughs> God, you, that's very good. You just pulled that date yeah. out, of, out of your no, back pocket. I, I, I looked it up the other day, but it was—I know it was June. Um, the reason I know is because it's around my wife's birthday, <laughs> <laughs> and that that year '99 was kind of eventful in that um, that was the year that my now wife uh, Pip and I got together. Mm-hmm. So we got together on New Year's Eve, so '98, '99. Yep, and that was around the time of the trailer as well, and you know things were ramping up. And, <laughs> it was an exciting time for a young man. Exciting times. <laughs> um, she was looking at me going, what have I got myself Yeah, into? exactly. She's like, oh, you got, if it had been a year earlier or a year later, my Star Wars-ness would probably be on the fringes enough that you probably wouldn't have noticed for a while. That's right, yeah. You yeah, caught me was, right in the middle of Star Wars fever. It was front and center. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it was It was around June, June th- it was June 3rd, and uh, went to the midnight session. I'm not sure if you did, but we went to the midnight session with yeah my wife and two two of my friends one of which is coming to celebration clint um and yeah midnight session in hoyts in george street in sydney and uh do you remember the first time you even like heard of that they were gonna like actually do the prequel for real like it was always sort of like a thing that was around but like when it actually felt like it was the thing that was happening do you yeah i i did because um since this around the special edition time like 97 i started collecting star wars insider yeah and i started to sort of ramp up from about that time and looked at sort of sort of websites like the net, and there was another website called ain't it cool news i don't know if you remember mm-hmm. that one yeah there's a lot of rumors from that one and yeah I, I i really really remember that time of like just what's this movie gonna be like you, you got you got visions in your head of of what it could be just just the the lines that's dropped in the in the original trilogy around the clone wars and all that sort of thing i knew your father when there was a 
yeah, and, and you know, he was, he was a great pilot and all those sort of things. And you got all these visions in your head of what it will be. And I don't know that it turned out exactly what was in my <laughs> head or head cannon. Well, I remember because uh, I was similar because I, I did, I started uni in 97. So yeah, I did what the first multimedia course in the country. Um, so I wanted to be a graphic designer. I didn't get into graphic design course. It's really hard to do out of high school. And also, to be honest, my portfolio was pretty crap. So, but I got into multimedia. So I uh, did that. And um, one of the perks of the job of doing multimedia in 97 was we had access to like a computer lab that had like brand new, well, I guess yeah. there were iMacs. There were those big, you know, the big blue ones, the big fat boys with the, you know, the clear plastic backs oh, yep, on them. Yep. And the... So they had, there were different colors, but there was like a clear blue yeah. case to the back. Yeah, yeah. I think they yeah. were all blue ones. But anyway, so we, <laughs> we had um, unlimited access to this lab that were all, and all the computers were on, on the internet. We had an email yep. address as well, 97 pretty unheard of and yeah so while you had this sort of unfettered access to the internet and then star wars websites so like you said yeah yeah the force.net i think jedi net was another one um i think star wars.com got a, a website pretty early on as well and they yeah, were dri- I, I, dripping little bits of like concept art and stuff i remember in the corners yeah. of things of like coruscant buildings and and all this kind of stuff yeah, very similar. I was in uni in 95 doing an engineering course, but one of my topics was, I think it was called multimedia technology. So it was one of these sort of elective subjects in like 97 and very similar to you. Yep. We had full access to computer labs where no one else did. We had very good internet connections. Like universities in those days were essentially the internet, you know, like that was mm. the, the, the core of the internet was universities and, um, and yeah, Things like the trailer. Um, I was working at the time and also um, studying at UTS. And I think, yeah, it was sort of late 98 or late 98, I think. Early yeah, 99. it was 98 because I'm, yeah, I've got a trailer story and, um, after you. <laughs> and I remember, like, on my home network connection was just too slow for any videos. I remember Apple QuickTime, they released a lot of trailers around that time. And I just remember trying to use that from home and it was just ridiculous like you that's ex- pretty much exactly would... what happened i got given yeah. i think i got for what am i think it must be my birthday it must be my 18 or 19th birthday um i got given like it was it was some sort of subscription to melbourne internet or melbourne it was some kind of melbourne internet oh it was online. melbourne it i think one or something like that yeah and i got like <laughs> whatever it was 80 hours of internet or something it was yeah. some kind of thing like that so we could access the internet from home somebody at the, the the share house i was in had a computer that had a modem on it or whatever and you could plug the phone line in and blah, blah. so we had some internet access but it was pretty you know rudimentary dial up and i when when the trailer dropped um it wasn't online as soon as, as far as I know, it wasn't online the same time it was in the, the theater. I feel like it came later. Yeah, it was probably a week or so later. Yeah, but I remember the one of the the websites was forced on it, or one of them had a had a video. Somebody had got a video of it, whether it was in the cinema or not. Yep, and you could watch it. And I remember trying to download and got nowhere. Like I think I got, you know, I think the opening shot is that sort of pan across the desert. I yep. think I got a second and a half across that desert. So I basically didn't see anything. And um, yeah, it wasn't, and I've said this before, it wasn't until they showed it on Entertainment Tonight, I think, that was the first time I saw it. Yeah. And I recorded it off the TV in the middle of the night. And then subsequently no, I saw, I, saw it in the cinema like later on. Yeah, I saw the trailer because it was so hard to do it from home. I, I was either uni the next day or on my actual work. So I was kind of working part-time and uni part-time. I'm pretty sure I just gave up at home, and I think it was the next day or the day after I downloaded the entire thing in like what would have been two minutes, and I was like, "This is brilliant! This is like <laughs> what a way we'll never get better than this." <laughs> and then I was like jumping through hoops to get the original URL and trying to capture the video file to be able to share with everyone else. So I had the original source QuickTime file and all that kind of stuff. So I shared that with friends as well via, oh, like the so they didn't have to download it either. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, yeah, look, fond memories of that time. That was um, kind of the bleeding edge of it. Was it was when the internet sort of became a thing for the mainstream as well? I would say. Yeah, yeah and it was it was sort of that perfect time where it was there was enough of it around where you could get more access than you've ever had before, but it was still scarce enough that it wasn't 
everywhere and you still had mm. to kind of hunt it out and you know it was it was still kind of secondary place for information in a lot of cases you obviously like the trailer didn't drop the same time as the theaters um you know starwars.com was just sort of drip feeding things um but yeah it was exciting and i remember that was like where they put the cast with the like i remember seeing who the, who the cast yep. was for the first time and um I think the only person I really recognised was Ewan McGregor because I had seen Train Spotting. I didn't really know who Liam Neeson was, and I don't think I knew who Natalie Portman was. I certainly knew who she was after that, but uh, I certainly yeah. didn't know who she was at the time. And um, yeah, I'm, I can't remember who else they announced. I feel like it was just those guys, those three cores that got announced at the start. I don't even remember. Yeah, Natalie Portman was. I remember seeing The Professional with. Um, it was a Luke Besson film. Yep. Um, and she was. That was the first film, so I'm sure she would have got cast from that film. And mm. I didn't know Liam Neeson as much, um, but definitely Ewan McGregor um, as well. Yeah, and then it was sort of that thing where it just kind of ramped up and ramped up, and then all of a sudden it was like Phantom Menace. Fever. I remember, like, even when they announced the title, I remember logging on to. It must have been the Force dot net, and yeah. it was like the headline was Phantom Menace, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and that was what it was because everybody was like, "It'll be like you know, the Clone Wars or the something of the yeah. Jedi or the." And it 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 still is a, it's still the weirdest Star Wars movie title it's probably still the weirdest star wars title of anything really yeah i i seem to recall some debate or not date it was kind of the first sort of rumor mill that happened around the the name of star Wars. because i don't know if you remember they released a lot of sort of official logos and official like uh, of episode one so episode one was the logo itself was very prominent mm. in and then the the Everything else, when it came forward, the Phantom Menace was like a subheading, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then, as the prequels went on, the the name of the prequels became at forefront, and then the episode number became secondary. People kind of but, got it, but you know, because they kind of went, "Oh, okay, I get it." it there was actually one. also a lot of merch released around before the name Phantom Menace came out. So, and I, and I wish I had it somewhere. I probably do. I, I don't throw away things, but I had this um. This bucket hat. So you remember the nineties, sort of late nineties, yeah, kind of Stone hats. Roses era. Bucket, yeah, yeah. You got bucket Manchester hat. I had episode one bucket hat, and it didn't have the Phantom Menace <laughs> on it. Just that episode one, episode one logo. Um, and I remember wearing that the whole time, and everyone's going, "What's episode one?" I go, "Well, that's Star Wars." And I don't even think it had the word Star Wars on it from memory. It just said episode one. Oh right, it just like and uh, I don't recall well. where I got it from. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of merch came out. <laughs> And I seem to recall they didn't release the name till very late, sort yeah. of late 98 as well. So yeah. I don't even know if it was even on the first trailer. I'd have to... Yeah, I think it was. I, I think it was. But maybe just when the trailer came out, they might have done it I there. think it was the poster that came out first with the name. Yeah, okay. Maybe. I'd have to... Because I think that first, that first poster, the one with Anakin... You know, with the, the shadow. Vader shadow, that would just said episode one on it. That yep, definitely yep. didn't say Phantom Menace on it. Yeah, so I, I do remember kind of going, Phantom Menace, Phantom Menace, Phantom, you know, because I was like, a, my, my favorite comic book character was the Phantom, you know, the, the, the protector of the jungle. And that was always, I mean, I guess it was the Phantom of the Opera, but it was always like my go to for the Phantom. And then all of a sudden, the Phantom Menace. But it, it is a an odd title. I mean, 25 years on now, obviously, nobody bats an eyelid, but. They've certainly it never... was odd at the time, but I think George always explained it as, you know, Saturday morning serials, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, kind of oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but they've never really gone that wackadoo with titles since then, really. I mean, maybe. Yeah. But, um, yeah, and then it, it basically just kind of kept ramping up and ramping up. You know, like I didn't... I was... 99, I was in third year uni. I was living in a share house. You know, I was working at a news agency. Um that was my job, my part-time job. You know, I didn't have any money, as is the way when you're sort of 18, 19 or whatever I was. 
Well, actually, that was, that was, that was a bit older. Did, did you get by then. Did you get any of those magazines like the Rolling Stone cover and the no. I think it was like do you no. remember Who Weekly? Who Weekly? I think at the time I remember had... the Rolling Stone one. That was it Jar Jar reading? The, he was reading like the the seventies one. I think it was. Yep. Yep. yep I do. Yep. I, I remember I saw all of that. Like I think my most extravagant thing was buying the Lay's chips because they had the little like collectors cards yeah. in them and stuff. You know, because I was always gonna, I was going to buy potato chips anyway because I loved potato chips, but I didn't really buy because I didn't have any much money. So it was always really like i didn't really buy t-shirts or i don't think even figures really maybe one or two i got an obi-wan for my 21st some a friend of mine bought me an obi-wan phantom menace uh toy for my 21st but i remember i had a friend of mine who was working at a kfc uh which i actually don't live that far from now actually the in ashburton and he was working there, and the KFC Pepsi was doing the promo, the crossover promo with the with the Star Wars. They had these like massive, like long, tall, long, thin banners. And um, I guess once Phantom Menace Mania had passed, they were taking them down. And he uh, he was going to get rid of it, and he asked me if I wanted it, and I said, "Yep." So I had I had this big like Phantom Menace banner in my bedroom in my share house that smelled like grease <laughs> and chicken because <laughs> it'd been in a KFC for how many months? But um, yeah, um, I do you do you remember trying to like when it had already come out in America and we had to wait? Like, did you remember? Were you? Did yeah. You- so I also recall getting the novel. So I bought the hardcover novel. Like a week or two before it came. Did you read it? I I read bits and pieces. I think you know you know when you get a book sometimes you read the first page and the last page. Yeah, right. I, I think I did that. And um but then the old um I guess one of the first spoilers I ever encountered, which was the soundtrack listing. Yeah. Of, yeah. Because that definitely came out before the film. I remember seeing Yeah, I've it still got the C D back there, but um I remember looking at the back of the C D and going, Oh, the death of Qui-Gon or Qui-Gon's funeral. I'm like, yeah. oh, thanks for that. Thanks for that CD cover. Because I think the back cover had like a lightsaber fight or some kind of, you know, so it was quite a cool picture. So you want to sort of yeah. turn it over and look at it. Yeah, I have a feeling I probably got that spoilt as well. Um, or at least I kind of looked and didn't look, but I knew deep down that I had kind of looked. <laughs> I, I, look I a bit, it didn't. wasn't surprising because you look at, you know, Master and Apprentice and... You know, yeah, Luke and you kind of go, Obi-Wan, well, Obi-Wan like, you know, kind of makes it, but, you know, yeah, it's sort of, yeah, and I didn't I didn't go, I didn't read spoilers online, I didn't sort of know what the plot was, um, aside from what the trailers were showing and things, you know, there was sort of like, all right, there's a planet's being invaded, they go to Tatooine, they meet Anakin, there's a race. I mean, that kind of feels like that's a big chunk of the film. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, you didn't get spoiled that, that it was about a trade dispute? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, we'll get to that in a sec. So, yeah, I mean, I, so sort of leading up, you know, I was I was definitely the hype master. I, you know, I had a lot of mates who were into Star Wars, so it was certainly easy to convince people to go to midnight. We probably had maybe a good 10, 12 people who came along at midnight. Um, we went to... Oh, Forest Hill, Hoyts, um, if you know Melbourne. I'm not quite sure why we went to that one. It's not an amazing cinema, but it was sort of closest to where we were living at the time, I think. So we sort of got the crew there. and But you you couldn't book your seats, so it was just you could buy your tickets in advance. But, you know, we yeah. walked up. I like to say we walked up about an hour early and we were pretty much close to the front of the line. And I think they had multiple screens going anyway. So it was, um, yeah, we all got in, got decent spots spots and stuff but it was um it was pretty exciting i think it was it was um i think it was di- definitely different to the subsequent ones even the sequel ones it, w- it was a lot more kind of like i don't know what's <laughs> what's this gonna, what's this gonna be <laughs> yeah it, it, it seemed like there would be a still a very big gap between episode one and four like how are they gonna close the gap to darth vader and, and things like that but um yeah i I think because I watched that trailer so many times and you have to admit that that trailer was pretty exciting in terms of like it, it painted a picture of what the movie could be or, or, you know, talk about head head cannon and visualizing, trying to guess what will happen in the movie. But um, I think I watched that trailer so many times that I felt like I'd seen the movie already. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
And uh, and I wouldn't say I was disappointed by it. I was still kind of excited and hyped on the night. But subsequent viewings, I was like, what is this film? Like, I was still just intrigued by, like, what, what really, is George thinking? I was <laughs> like, really similar. I was really similar because I remember going and sitting and watching the film and I was even thinking about this because we watched it. I watched it you know, two weeks ago with, my, with the girls because they hadn't seen it before. And... Um, and kind of, you know, like, okay, you know, they land and even the tone is slightly different and, you know, and then you sort of get to the Trade Federation and they've got those sort of really thick accents and it's all a bit sort of like, <laughs> what do they do it? You know, kind of like, okay. <laughs> and I just remember the, the the bit that took me out of it or when I became very aware of what was going on or whatever was where they got, they meet Jar Jar and they go down to the, they get walking down to the, to the shore to jump in the water. And I don't know if it's the moment he jumps in or just before that. I remember kind of just thinking to myself in the cinema, I have this really distinct thing of just going like, <laughs> what the fuck is going on in this movie? Like, what is this? Like, is this Star Wars? Like, it just became very, I don't know whether it was because we hadn't really been in that environment before. The tone just seemed a lot different. Um, yeah, definitely the tone was different I wasn't quite well. sure where it was going. It just didn't seem, you know, I was so used to those other films and just the feel of them. And, you know, and I think that's something that, the sequel trilogy did really well, especially The Force Awakens, is just capture yeah. that feel of what how the original ones kind of feel. But at the same time, I I'm just going off the Phantom Menace, but I get a bit nervous when I see a new Star Wars film. Like I not nervous, what's the word? Like it's a strange feeling seeing a new Star Wars film. So like when I first saw The Last Jedi for the first time, it's one of my favourite films, but at the time I was like what have I just seen? Like it, it was kind of, it kind of made me kind of, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's almost like the enjoyment's not there. I'm kind of nervous for what's going to happen. It's almost like or, you're learning history for the first time. You know what I mean? Like you kind of go, well, then yeah. I have to live with this thing. No matter what it is, I have to live with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no and I also it. have to either. I don't def- complain about it either. I generally don't complain about what's happened in the film. It's just, it's kind of um, intriguing how different a film can be. You know, it's, yeah. um, yeah, so I became really, and I got, I definitely got into the film. It took me a while to get back into the film, watching it the first time. And I think once they kind of got out back onto Naboo and they got on the ship and they kind of got going and stuff, and it, I think that felt more familiar, especially when you get to Tatooine and stuff like that. It felt a bit more familiar. Oh yeah, Tatooine. And, you know, and you made, kind made of go, like, hey, all right, I feel <laughs> like I'm, I feel like I'm back. It, it, um, but um, yeah, I. I don't, I don't remember coming out of it and like knowing that I enjoyed it. And I had a few other friends who were just like, yeah, yeah, you know. I was just like, yeah, yeah, you know. And, I was, and it's late. It's, you know, it's like two or three in the morning by the time you've seen it and you've had all this sort of run up. Yeah. And, um, I think I still saw it probably seven or eight times yeah. after that. But it was in the cinema for months and months. Back in the day, kids, they just leave. Yeah, my, my number forever. is always six for, for Star Wars films in the cinema. Generally six. Yeah, um, right. Um, but I, I'm the same, like first two viewings was like, this is amazing. We got new Star Wars and third and fourth were like, this is a really strange film and I don't know what I think about it. I don't know if I actually like it. And I started to pick apart things. Um, and then towards the end, I was like, no, just go with it. Like it's, 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 I think that, and then that was the thing when you started is. looking for the, like that, then you started looking for the, like by the time I got to sort of five or six viewings of it, I was kind of knew the film pretty well. So then you're just sort of looking forward to the bits that you liked as well. But I remember going, yeah. like I saw it, you know, like I think I had the second time I saw it, I think I saw it with my mum and dad because they were up in Melbourne and they had a friend of theirs who came along and then I saw it, you know, you know a couple of times you'd sort of take other people, you know, not midnight people. You know, people who will go, I'll go next week or whatever and I'll go see it and blah, blah, blah. But I, you also, I mean, I felt a sense of responsibility as well because you, I mean, you're sort of like the one who's sort of, you know, and I guess I probably still have that a little bit now because it's like, you're you like know, the ambassador. Like, yeah, you are. Like... You're like the ambassador. So if the country, if the country's, do, you know, doing a bad thing, you, it, it's sort of coming back onto you. And that's still the case now. I think, you know, even with yeah, your mates and stuff and they'll go, well. oh, what's up with that Star Wars? Yeah, that Star Wars movie was a bit crap or oh, that was really good or... Whatever, but this 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 felt more amplified, I suppose, and maybe because I was only sort of like twenty twenty one at the time, it became even more aware of it. Yeah, but is it a good movie? Do you think it's a good movie? 
Like if, if you're talking about film and and you know, <laughs> <laughs> if you're talking about film studies and all those kind of things, then probably not. But it's it uh, the way I describe it now is it, it's 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 almost like a charming movie. Like it's like how do I describe it? Like watching Jar Jar, I've got I've got nothing of nothing but love for Jar Jar. But at the time, I was like, who is this? Like what is this stupid creature? Like you just, <laughs> and now you just look back and you go, it's just a, like a, it's an enjoyable movie. I wouldn't say it's a great film. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, Jar Jar, because he's, he's sort of, I've kind of almost looked at him. He's almost like a perfect antithesis of like a boiled down thing of George's imagination. He's so, he's actually is so Star Wars. Everything about him, good and bad. Yeah. He's sort of like a microcosm of design and technology and, you know, all the things that sort of boiled into one where it's sort of like remarkable but annoying but you kind of warm to it and you've looked past its flaws and and you enjoy it and and then yeah. and within more distance you seem to, like i feel like jar jar and especially the phantom menace are so sort of tied i feel like that they, they kind of are, are the sort of embodiment of each other um but the thing is like i like i said i watched it a couple of weeks ago when it was was on re-release um, in Melbourne and we were going to go and then we had sort of a window on a Saturday afternoon I was going to take the girls and there's just no screens in Melbourne it wasn't being shown anywhere except for one cinema like an hour out of town I'm going I'm not doing that but all the other screens were on the Sunday so there was a bunch of them on Sunday but we just we had stuff on so I'd sort of said oh well that's not going to really work um, and then the, the girls just go well can't we just watch it on Disney Plus? And I go, oh yeah, we do have Disney Plus, and I've got yeah, like a, a big TV, and we've got a sound bar, so let's. I don't have to leave the house. I don't have to spend sixty bucks taking the kids to see a movie that, that I've already seen a hundred times. So let's we make just, some fresh popcorn. That's literally what I did. I like got the, I got some microwave popcorn out, and because of you know, since I had my heart condition stuff, I've stopped eating salty and snacks food pretty much all the time, except for special occasions, like when you watch a mm. Star Wars movie. So we got to bust out the heavily buttered microwave popcorn yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh and watched it with the kids and they sat through the whole thing and they loved it um olive had seen a new hope and empire with the mso and she really enjoyed those movies she hasn't seen them to joy yet but she said phantom menace was her favorite and my youngest sloan loved it as well like she got like this star wars encyclopedia out and started looking at it and she's been hassling me ever since to watch star wars 2 it's like, can we watch Star Wars 2? What about this weekend? Let's go to the movies and watch Star Wars 2. I'm like, well, it's not out in the movies. The, I don't know whether they'll do the Attack of the Clones yeah. <laughs> anniversary or not. But, um, yeah, it, when, w- perfect. When was the last time you saw that bef- bef- before then? Um, like, probably don't remember. <laughs> all the way through. Oh, we've I did a commentary track for it for the podcast. I think for... Um, it might have been for Catherine and when Catherine and Andy were doing the podcast together. And I think we did a comment, a Phantom Menace commentary track for that. And so that probably would have been, I don't know, three or four years ago, pre COVID. So that's probably the last time I saw it all the way through. And I guess you're kind of talking over it and you're making jokes and stuff as well. Um, but yeah, I became very, like, I know the movie back to front, so nothing's surprising me. But I did enjoy this, like, the silly moments more because I knew the girls would enjoy them more, but the slower moments hurt more because I was just sort of going, are they going to start glazing over? But they were, they were good. They were like right into it. Oh, hang on. You've gone, you've gone mute there, Turbo. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I, uh, I'd seen it about five years ago and probably not paying too much attention just in the background kind of thing. So I hadn't seen it for ages and, you know, I thought, okay, I better see it for this weekend and look through the uh, cinema guides and all that. And it wasn't playing on the weekend. It was only playing as part of the marathon. So I think it was yep. four, five, six on Saturday and prequels on Sunday and had a pretty busy weekend. And And then I saw that, uh, event cinemas was playing it on Mon- uh, Phantom Menace on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday the following week. So I went, okay, cool. I'll, I'll watch it. I'll watch it on Tight Ass Tuesday or something, you know. <laughs> um, and then I got to like Monday, Monday or Tuesday, and looked at the the guides, and it just completely disappeared from the the cinema sh- screening. Like the it just didn't exist. 
<laughs> so I kind of missed that window to see it at the cinema. So um, I think it was a Tuesday morning. Um, Tuesday morning's an early morning for us. Oh, Monday or Tuesday, and uh, drop the kids off early to school, and my wife goes to work. I actually just put the um, the Blu-ray in. Oh, it was actually 4K, the and I've got a I've got a 5.1 system. I've got a subwoofer and everything. So it was the first time I've actually used the proper home theater system turned up to full with no one in the house and i really enjoyed it like um having that subwoofer just adds adds a lot to it especially like the pod race scenes and yeah um so i kind of yeah i was kind of enjoying it i was just sitting there with my dog and (laughs) (laughs) and just going this is actually a pretty good movie (laughs) yeah well i only just regret when that was the thing like if i'd known that the girls would have enjoyed it that much I, I kind of instantly regretted that we didn't see it at the, the- cinema because I was kind of going, oh, yeah. you know, I think they'll be all right, but uh, it's it very. It, I didn't, you know, and again, the, the times didn't match up. It wasn't like we were nearly out the door and I just I pulled the plug. Like I probably, if there had been the window to do it, I would have done it. But I was kind of going, oh, it's a shame that they didn't see it for, on, at the cinema for the first time because it really did lend it to it. You know, we've got like a 75-inch TV and our soundbar is pretty good. It's not quite 5.1, but it still kicks when you crank it. And, mm. um, it, yeah, they really, really dug it. I'm a little bit kind of going, things progressively get darker in these movies, um, you know, not for <laughs> grown-ups really to worry about, but a five-year-old might be a little bit concerned about some of the stuff in there. So we we'll, the jury's out whether we jump onto Attack of the Clones or not, but we'll... We'll see, but yeah, I, I didn't. Th- I thought that visually there wasn't too much that looked too sh- shonky. I think that the fact that there's actually quite a lot of practical stuff that's going on in that movie as well. It's got a very distinct look. I think none of the other movies look like it. Like I think two and three get more digitally looking, and obviously it's yeah, because they, they were shot the first films on on digital, yeah, and full, I, full and, of digital. And, so. And the originals obviously look like the originals. This, this one's very unique. No, none of the other movies look like this. Yeah, because it was shot on film, but there was still so many CGI effects and everything. And it was a weird combination. Like you said, there was a lot of practical effects still. So Yeah, a lot of miniature work. And a lot of miniature well, like work. That. And so I think there was a stat saying that it had that film had more miniatures and practical effects than the entire original trilogy. And you go, really? Like, you always remember it being the CGI fest kind of thing. Mm. Um, But they really, I guess they had a lot of run up to that film to try and get it right. And, you know, if you look at the beginning documentary, things didn't always go too well. And and there was a bit of chaos. That's the the Peter Jackson cut I'd like to see of that. You know, like that, that documentary is amazing. And it's probably still the best, you know, maybe Heart of Darkness. It, it's got to yeah, be in the it's... top three or four best making of documentaries ever, as far as like what they're what they're willing to show. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and you just wish I just I just wish and, and the fact that, that shows... I, I watched it the other week as well, and um, I generally do that around Star Wars Day just because I, I I just am fascinated by that documentary. But like they even talk about like when they're selecting Jake Lloyd and looking through the 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 last three actors that were going to be Anakin Skywalker, they even say that this other kid is actually better um, and they should go with him. And all of a sudden, Jake Lloyd's signing a contract, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't one, like... of them, one of the kids who auditions ends up on Malcolm in the Middle? I've got I think a feeling so. that I he's that, one of yeah. the brothers. I don't think it's the littlest kid. I think it might be the middle brother, but he, yeah. It, and it's just amazing. The and maybe he dodged a bullet. I don't know. Well, it's like... just the twist of fate of that kind of stuff, isn't it? You know, it's... Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just fascinating. I just wish that they would do stuff like that. Like, and, and you know, the documentary stuff that they've shown on the Force Awakens and the Last Jedi, particularly, you know, are, are pretty good. But it's not the same. It's, I would say the the director and the Jedi with um, Ryan Johnson was kind of close, not quite a warts and all, but it did talk a lot about. Um, there was you know, tension the thoughts in of Mark that Hamill. As well. Yeah, and they didn't shy away from it. Yeah, and and Carrie as well, having passed away. That that documentary was pretty pretty good. And I, I'd say between the beginning and the, and the last Jedi documentary, um, those two are kind of the best representations. But I don't even think they did one for Rise of Skywalker. They probably yeah, just gave I, up. And... Yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, it's just amazing. Like someone was talking about that the other. Day. It's like J.J. Abrams hasn't been seen since, and that's like five. We're five years from that movie now. It's it's kind of crazy, but. Um, I 
yeah, look, is it a good movie? It's, it is a good movie. It's a good. It is a good movie. I don't think it's a great movie. Um, I don't know where I. I don't really love ranking Star Wars movies. I the original trilogy will always be the one closest to my heart because that was the one when I was a kid and I was the most influenced by it. But I've always gotten enjoyment out of all of them, in one way or another. Even the ones that I think are lesser than the others. Um, but yeah, I. I don't watch like the fan edits or the phantom edit or anything like that. I kind of just stick with the warts and all. I mean, maybe you could trim a few things and move things around and maybe yeah. it would be a little bit, you'd up the tension in certain places and stuff like that. But I think it is what it is. Um, but- you wonder if it, since George went back and did the special editions because he wasn't happy with the originals, do you think he has the same perception of the phantom menace? Because you look at the beginning documentary and he's not super happy with a lot of it. And obviously, there was a lot of bleeding edge sort of technology and CGI and all that kind of stuff. Do you, I wonder if he's thinking maybe I'll go back and do the Phantom Menace <laughs> special edition? Like, because I wonder if it would be easier to do, and if they have like the original computer graphics files and all those designs, they could even enhance it based on today's technology. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, I, I'm curious to know that because I don't think, he has I don't that think that it's as much of a sticking as like I think. I think there's probably things like I'm sure he looks back and goes, oh, I'd, I'd tighten that or I'd change that or whatever. And I, I know there's that amazing bit in the, you know, the, the documentary where he's just like, oh, I think I've gone too far here. Like, I think I've just gone too far. Like, I've, yeah. I've tried to push things and I've, I've like, what, how do I get back from this, basically? Uh, um, you know, and also shout out to the unsung hero of that documentary, Rick McCullum, the, the coolest, oh, yeah. the coolest. The, 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 is it when the he picks up? The Ewan McGregor is dude, gonna, dude, it's like, oh, my God. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you miss good old Rick McCullum? Um, but, I, look, I think... For the most part, he kind of got... Cl- I think he would probably go, that's the closest I got to what was in my head when I wrote something. Yeah. Like, I think Star Wars, those original movies, I was always compromising based on, you know, technology and budget and blah, 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 blah. And I think this is the closest I got to my in, in my head. But at the same time, it's like, if you read those um, making of original trilogy books, there's always three or four different voices kind of reining George in or keeping him focused or, you know, whether it's Larry Kasdan or Gary Kurtz or, you know, Marsha Lucas editing the movie and whoever else kind of shaping the story has always kind of got those other elements working on it. Um, yep. and this is, this is clear. This is undistilled a hundred percent George, you know, this is pure <laughs> <laughs> for better or worse. Yeah, true. It's, it's, it's a good rep- representation of his head. So he, you know, he added the, the pod race, the car race kind of scene, you know, the wacky races kind of thing. Mm. Um, yeah, it is George. It's pure George. Do you get the third lap on the Blu-ray, on the one you watched, like the longer pod race? Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's just sort of in yeah. there now, isn't it? I think it was on the Disney one as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I tend to, you know, I collect physical editions of things and, you know, the beginning documentary I've got on the original DVD and I've got the Blu-ray box and, but the 4K. So I, I kind of like capturing those editions of Star Wars because you know things are going to change over time. And thing, the thing that gets me is on, on Disney Plus, they could easily just edit things and no one would know. They could enhance things and, and oh, yeah. everything's in flux, you know. Is the beginning like, on you, the you Blu-ray? About, what's is, that? Is the beginning on the 4K? No, no. Uh, it, I think beginning's only on the DVD. Only on the DVD, DVD which I yeah. had. I don't know where it is. I definitely don't have it. Like I gave most of my DVDs to my old flatmate when I moved to England. It might I've still got be, one right might, here. Yeah, there it is. It might still be at his. It might still be his house. I think he's got all the all the DVDs and a lot of my old ones. There's probably a few there I'd like to get back. I should. Like you up. just think about things. Like I've been, I've been sort of ordering and buying the Mandalorian, 4K and Blu-ray, just to it's like it's like film preservation or TV preservation, because you don't know what's going to happen to those things in the future. One day you're like, going to you get remember, an email and they're going to say, remember, Disney Plus is $80 a month now, and you're going to be like, well, I'm not paying for that anymore. I'm going to yeah, get my well, DVDs. You look, at, you look at other things like what was in The Mandalorian with the blue jeans guy that was in the corner. Like you could see a guy with blue jeans, one of the one of the set set guys in, yeah. the, in the corner, and then a couple of weeks later they edit him out. And I'm like, that's, I, I like that, having that 
you know, film history of that version. <laughs> it, it makes you wonder how many changes they've done that you from just, you, never you just don't know about, you know. Yeah. I'm sure there's some sleuths out there, you know, checking certain things. And, of course, they do, like, colour grading, all those sort of changes. But, um, yeah, who knows? They may be tweaking things. I mean, the classic one is McClunky. That's Yeah. Um, the final kiss off, the final yeah. FU that George did. He's like, I'm going to mess with this one more time, just to, yeah. to the, but it's not going to happen until after I've already sold the company and I've pocketed my four billion. Yeah, so like you ask, like what? How many versions of Star Wars are there? There's quite a lot. Mm. You know, think, think of how many edits have been. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Like Phantom Menace has got at least two or three because they've got the original one. They've got the the one with a longer pod race on it. They've got the yep. 3D one that they actually had in cinemas. It was a 3D cut. Um, who knows? We'd have to go back and find out. But look, it's um, 25 years ago. Yeah, it's it just makes me think of 99 and the lead up and sort of where I was. You know, I'd moved from the country to, to Melbourne. You know, I was at uni. I was living in share houses with my mates. You know, that was the sort of the year that everybody started turning 21. So you had a lot of 21st parties and stuff. It was a it was a good time to be alive. I hadn't met, you know, the love of my life or anything in between Star Wars. There was, there was no girlfriend going around, believe it or not. But, um, yeah, it's quite cool that you can kind of, you know, and you, you sort of tie it back to those memories. It's quite cool. Yeah. I'm trying to think, but what else was that year? That was the Matrix. Was it the Matrix out in '99 as well? Yeah, it, might have it would have been the Matrix. I think the Mummy was out in '99 as well. I'm going to attempt to yeah. have a look. Y2K at the movie. bug. There was a lot of activity at my work. Yeah, and, and Eyes Wide Shut came out in '99. We went to a lot. We went to movies pretty much every week. Uh, yeah, in same. Like, Eyes Wide Shut. I saw at the <laughs> cinema. Big Daddy. I saw at the cinema. American Beauty. I saw at the cinema. Sleepy Hollow, I saw at the cinema. Being John Malkovich, telling Mr. Ripley. Jeez, I saw almost Golden all these. Golden Age of Cinema. <laughs> Phantom Menace, um, Girl Interrupted, Fight Club. Um, what else? The Mod Squad remake. I did see that at the cinema. And Office <laughs> Space and Austin Powers. God. Bowfinger, Analyze This, Virgin Suicides, Mystery Men. God, I saw all these movies at the cinema. We would go to the <laughs> South Park the movie, World is Not Enough. We would go to the movies pretty much every week without mm. fail. No responsibilities. Like, That's the best. Yeah, it was like ten dollars, you know, student prices or eight dollars or whatever it was. No response. Yeah, no responsibilities. And that's the thing. Like I, t- I, I, I equate you know the, the original trilogy with being a, a kid going, you know, being in, in school. The sequel trilogy was started off with being you know, at university, and then the sorry, the prequel trilogy, and then the sequel trilogy, you know, came out the year I became a dad. So it was always sort of like yeah. Equating those things to, to life events that sort of for some reason always sort of happened around Star Wars and stuff. So it'll always be a special part of my heart for Phantom Menace Turbo. Yeah, yeah I, I quite enjoy it. It's charming. It's a charming movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we've landed. It's, it's not perfect. <laughs> no, it's not perfect, but they don't make them like that anymore. Yeah. Um. When you get a guy with complete sort of autonomy and control, and it's a self-funded movie as well. Is that stuff? I've just seen that stuff in the in the um, the news at the moment about it. is it Megalopolis that Francis Ford Coppola is kind of yeah, yeah. you know it's, it's it's the same vibe. But, you know, he's paying for that with his own money. He's got single vision. Yeah. Um, I don't I know whether it'll be we'll be talking about Megalopolis in in twenty five years time, but who knows? I have to wait to see it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's the same film company, American Zoetrope, I think, is Coppola's film mm. production company. I think that's where George originally started. I think that was THX 113. It was done by that. So when I saw the logo in the Megalopolis, Meg, is it Megalopolis? I don't know. <laughs> um, it, sounds like um, a Lego, it sounds like a Lego cartoon or something, doesn't it? But yeah, <laughs> when I saw the American Zoetrope um, logo at the front, I was like, oh, this, what year is this? It's like... <laughs> But it, it sounds like it's his swan song was his final movie, um, and he's just poured all his money into it, you know. Um, yeah, it's quite fascinating because like we've been sort of interviewed about it and stuff. I know we, we're wrapping up here, and they're kind of going, "Oh, you know, you're spending all this money and da da da." He's just gone. Well, you know, I'm 85. I, I don't want to say that I didn't do something and have any regrets. Like I don't need the money. I'll just, you know, when I die. So I'm just going to say that I, that I can die peacefully and know that I did it the, the exact way that I wanted to do it. And I'm like, a lot to be said for that. Yeah, look, that, that's true. I mean, I, you kind of hope George will do something like that. Um, oh, if he just goes, I've got a $4 billion, 
I'm going to make a $4 billion yeah. <laughs> film or something. Just go out with an absolute bang. I got one more. Wait, wasn't he going to do that original um, sequel trilogy was going to be around sort of micro oh, biome. Just... No, what was it called? Midichlorian kind of at the uh, a different kind of concept of a, of a Star Wars film. Just do it. I mean, I know he doesn't own it anymore, but just, just do it or do it. And call, do it in name. I'm sure, everything, but I'm everything, sure Disney but, would let him do it. I'm sure. Absolutely well, sure. Especially if he pays for it himself. But uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, or if, he, if he had to do it and he just couldn't use the term Star Wars, but we all know it's Star Wars. It's just like, you know, it's like unlicensed Lego. It's just got like, you know, space thing on there. We're like, well, yeah, no, you're you can't right. that, say that's it, good. but we know, we know what it is. You know, you, you, you only have to slightly remove yourself enough from the, um, from the name, but we'll, we'll, we'll all know. And then someone will just edit in Star Wars later on, you know, online. <laughs> They'll just do this. Or you could just do it. He's got. I got four billion dollars. You can just sue me. Who cares? You know, one billion of it will just be the act- the money that I'll do in the class action when I re- release my Star Wars movies <laughs> to cinema that I paid for myself. Um, look at that, mate. You can easily knock an hour over talking talking Phantom Menace. Yeah. <laughs> All the memories, good times. but good times. But uh, no, thanks for coming on, mate. Anything you want to want to plug? Anything you want to want people to know what you're up to? Just. I got nothing to plug. I haven't been using social media much anymore, and it's quite refreshing. I would say you're just so. looking bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. You're not wait, not, <laughs> not, not let the, the the grind of social media get you Don't down. Don't let the bastards grind you down. Yeah, that's what I say. exactly, exactly. Well, if you if you are able to to make any of the Yakala uh, review shows, the invite will always be extended. So we might see you popping up on that, um, and if not the weekly ones, maybe we'll get you on the on the wrap up afterwards. And you can tell us. Yeah, for sure. Reckon. That'd be good. And um, you know, you'll hear more from Turbo not before then on the uh, Celebration Japan blog pods as well. Hopefully before then, but you've got that yeah. to look forward to. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be very fun. Going solo for that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm talking about. I mean, this is another discussion. We'll get you on for this as well. It's like I'm thinking about taking my kids, but it won't be all of them on every day. But we'll we'll see. I, I might have to pick your brain a bit too and you had good kids <laughs> as well you're just right so anyway we'll work that out but um yep thank you everybody for listening it's good to be back and hopefully next week we're going to do the acolyte preview show with matt and Catherine, and maybe Andy if he can make it and then we'll roll into the episode so there it is thank you very much turbo catch you later see you later mate yeah.